Let's see. Let me share, share, share. Um, yeah. Okay. Hold on. I'm recording. Okay. Let's do it this way. I'm going to share my screen. Hold on, y'all. Sorry. I got to get my thoughts together. Okay. <clears throat> um, all right. So yeah, that's, that's some, that's some good stuff. Dee. I'm super proud of you. I can't get over that. I keep thinking about it. Um, so tonight I really wanted, I don't know what Jade said something to me last week that made me think, um, about this topic and that she seemed to be doing some good stuff with her challengers and in her challenge groups. And so I asked her to talk tonight, but before we get into this topic of engaging challengers, um, I want to go over a couple of things, just like some housekeeping stuff and share some things with you. Um, excuse me, uh, I was going to welcome the new coaches and I will, I'll go ahead and do that. Let's see, we've got Lindsay Woods is a coach. Um, she signed up under me as well as Jason this past week and I'm really excited about them. They're, um, they're very different, but they're two young women who are just like really passionate about health and fitness and taking care of themselves and their families. And then Katie Beth Ming is a coach that signed up under Jade this last week. And so like I know Jade is super excited about her joining her team. And so like I really want to be better about welcoming coaches to our team because I feel like we do shout outs, but it's such a big deal to commit to this because it's not a, a minor thing to commit to. You know, people are much more willing uh, to do other things that that aren't so intimidating and so scary. So, uh, you know, like I think it's very brave even to just sign up as a coach. And, and I'm always excited to have new team members. Um, but one big thing that I want you guys to know is that these challenge pack sales are ending and it's under FAQ 1080. Uh, but today is the last day for the sale on Country Heat. So if you've got anybody who's talked to anyone about Country Heat, you know, like I would send them a message tonight and just say, hey, that sale is ending. Same for 21 Day Fix and 21 Day Fix Extreme. That's tomorrow. I actually messaged like 10 people today to remind them and nobody messaged me back. So like I get solids and no's too. Um, then on the 16th, the 21 Day Fix Extreme Performance Pack, uh, that's the one that comes with the um, – with the recover and the energize that ends as well as all the core to force challenge packs. So those are ending and I have no idea. I really don't understand what their plans are in the future for challenge packs. The way I kind of understand it is that they're just going to stay regular price to be honest. So, um, <clears throat> there, there may not be other challenge pack sales, but I don't know. They're always doing things different. So those are coming to an end soon. So if you've got anybody that you talk to about any of these programs, like I would definitely message them. Um, if you start new conversations and you're inviting people like today or tomorrow, whatever, uh, definitely talk about the 21 day fix. Like that's, you know, I would tell everybody that's what I started with. Um, it can save you 20 bucks. And then of course the all access challenge pack is still on sale. That will be on sale through this month and probably next month. So, uh, that's, those are, those are some things you guys need to know. Um, success club this month, and I called it January life changers cause that's what people are typically wanting to do in January, change their life. Hopefully that's what we're helping them do. Um, but this is the board, uh, the success club board thus far. I think I updated this this morning. And so there's a lot of people with some points on the board. Um, but you know, this is, it's a, it's a good month to, to reach out to people, to talk to people, uh, to share your story, you know, to definitely share that, that we're, what we're doing here is not just a, not just a quick fix. It's not just a 21 day fix. It's not just, um, you know, lose some pounds and then go back to what you were, to what you were doing in, in October or November of last year. You know, we really do want to help people make a life change. And, and so I feel like the more that we talk about that, the more that we talk about that in our posts, in our private conversations, in our whatever it is, face-to-face -face conversations that, that people will get what we're about and, and they will join us. They may not join us today. They may not join us in January, but I do believe that there's, you're going to see a lot of people who start something and they quit and then come March, April, May, they're going to say, Hey, D is still working out and she is still getting results and she is showing up every day. Maybe I should check into what she's talking about, you know? And so like, don't, don't lose hope if you've got people who maybe are on the fence or like I said, who just aren't answering you or, or, or doing something else, you know, just, just stick with it. You be the example. You, you show people what can be done when you're consistent, when you, when you pray, when you invite God into it, when you, you know, you have that support and accountability that comes from a challenge group and from a team of coaches and, and it just gives you credibility. But you guys with points on the board, well done, keep it up. Um, and it's like I said, it's just, 
January 9th. So, you know, like there's still plenty of time, but, um, so our, our health bet started today, you know, talk about that. Talk about your challengers, what they're doing, they're posting. Um, if you, obviously if you're not at success club yet, you want to run another challenge group. Um, I know that I'm going to run another challenge group, uh, starting January 23rd to kind of to try to catch those people who weren't ready to commit or just who were, who were, um, you know, they need to get back into a routine or, you know, whatever it might be. Uh, some people are telling me they had to wait till they got their check, you know, and, and so like, um, I'm, I'm going to run that group and to help my new new coaches who, um, who are just beginning to invite to give them something to invite to. Um, so important dates. Um, 2018, the Success Club trip registration begins on January 19th. I'm not really sure how that works because they are going to invite you guys off the list the way I understand it based on your success club points for last year. Um, so, but just keep that date in mind, watch for an email for some more information from corporate. Um, those trips are great guys. I mean, they're, you do have to pay a $300 deposit uh, to do it. And that kind of covers like fees and taxes and things, but it's still uh, your, your success club points that you're earning every month pay for your trip. So last year, Matt and I just had to pay $300 to register for that trip. I get to register tomorrow for the 2018 trip and hopefully it's just $300. I don't know. Um, but you know, it's, it's a really cool trip. Like it's all expense paid your room, your food, your drinks, all that stuff. Um, it's all expenses paid. And so like, just watch for that and pay attention to, to what, what information you get from corporate about that. Okay. Um, I said my next challenge group is 23rd. I'm doing a coach sneak peek, I think on the 25th. I was gonna do it the 31st, but I feel like that's a little late and I also wanna do a free group that last week. So I'm gonna do a coach sneak peek January 25th. Um, Summit, obviously, I was gonna, I was really talking, you guys, this doesn't apply to you because you all have your ticket, uh, but New coaches, even if you're in that qualification period for your free ticket, um, I would go ahead and purchase it, honestly, uh, you know, just to make sure that you have it. If you earn your free ticket, they will reimburse you. But as a new coach in like the first, is it the first 90 days or is it the first 30 days? I can't remember. You get that new coach discount. So um, that's really important. This is going to be fun. Like it's in New Orleans and it's great training and it's time for us to hang out as a team. Um, and Christy and I were also talking, it's not nailed down, but we want to do, um, uh, everybody, whoever wants to do it, if you have downline coaches or if you want to do it yourself, an Emerald training. And I think we're looking at the weekend of April the 8th. So you guys, if you want to participate or invite your coaches to do that, um, you know, look and see if you can do it that week, but it's not 100% sure yet. So I didn't put it on here. Um, do y'all have any questions about any of that? The Emerald thing will be, um, you know, you have to be an Emerald coach uh, at the time of the retreat and you have to have hit Success Club the month before in order to qualify. So think about that as you're recruiting coaches because anybody can get to Emerald pretty quickly, right? Um, and it's it's just, you know, helping your coaches get there. That means they've got a little bit of skin in the game and, and they really want to move forward. So that's going to be fun. It's going to be at Christy's house. Um, you know, there might be like a really tiny deposit just to help us cover some food and stuff, but it'll be good and it'll be good training. Um, so this weekend, I'm not going to take up a whole lot of Jade's time, but this weekend, I really, like, it was a really good, it was a really good weekend for me. It was very good training. It was very good just to be with, with other people who are kind of where I'm at in my business and to, to learn from other people. Um, I always prefer to be right here with y'all, to be honest. Like I kept thinking about, like, I wish I was in RC for Saturday. I mean, it was an honor and it was fun and there was a lot of stuff going on, but um, this is where I'm happy, honestly. But I did learn some things and there were just some really big things that stuck out to me because I was one of the presenters. And so lots of people came and they talked to me and they asked me questions and stuff. Um, and one of the biggest things I kept thinking was people quit too soon. People quit this business way before they even give it a chance. Uh, you know, I can't tell you how many people walked up to me and just said, but it's so hard. I'm having such a hard time. I, nobody, you know, nobody wants to join a challenge group. Nobody wants to coach. And every time I would, I would ask, like, well, are you posting about coaching? 
are you inviting to coaching? Are you doing your core vital behaviors every day? And they're like, well, no, it's just so hard. And I'm like, well, don't, you're, don't give up. Keep going. Just do the work, you know, and people will, you know, people will respond. It will be hard, but I just, I, you know, like, I'm just proud of our team and how you guys just show up. And, and now, like, I get in a rut where I fall out of inviting every day. I get in a rut where I don't want to talk about coaching. And so, like, I have to, like, have to be reminded by Melanie or by, you know, something you guys post or something, but you know, this business is a good business. If you know, when it comes to marketing MLMs, it's probably one of the harder ones just because you have to put yourself out there in a different way, but it's so much more rewarding than, than selling like, I don't know, isogenix or, or makeup or, you know, candles or something just because, you know, we get to invest in people after the sale. Like we get to encourage them and help them and, and lead them, you know, and, you know, after all that's done. And I just think that's just such a cool thing about this business. It's a blessing that well, I don't think the other ones have, but I'm partial to. Um, events are important. I, I say this all the time, but it's so important. As much as I love to sit here behind my computer, it's so important to important for us to get out from behind our computers and to to kind of fellowship and to learn and to interact with other people to 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 hear about struggles to hear about things that other people are struggling with and realize hey I'm not alone um, and to get ideas and tips and just encouragement um, and to learn from other coaches you know I it was, there were so many different people there, and I thought it was really cool how everybody ran their bit business differently. You know, whether it came to like how when they push for Success Club, or when they post, when they do their workout, you know, when they do their sneak peek, um, what type of people that they invite. Like everybody does this business in our own way, and I think that's really cool. Of course, we have systems, we have the four vital behaviors, but you can do and make this business whatever you want to. You know, like so many people were kind of. I think, at, I think at first kind of shocked, but then like relieved that I got up there and talked so much about my faith because you don't hear that a lot when you leave our circle. Like you don't hear a lot of coaches saying, you know, when I want to share the message of Christ or I want to, you know, to, you know, share my faith with other people. And, but people want to do that. I think they feel like they maybe just need permission to do that because so many other coaches don't do it. And so it was neat to be able to get up there and to, to share that. And I'm not tooting my horn, but I really, like people have asked me if I was nervous, but I felt so calm and so like purposeful in what I was sharing in my message that I just like had this huge piece about it. And, and it was really exciting to be able to just stand up there and share my story in the way that I was able to. And so like, it, it, I do think that it helped a lot of people. So like, if you ever feel feel like you're talking about your faith too much or whatever, don't like just roll with it, go with it, you know, just, just pray and follow where God leads you because he's definitely using you guys and he's using our message that we have and that, that voice that we have through coaching. So that's cool. Um, prioritize your time. So many people ask me about time management and I'm not good at it either, but I'm aware of it. Like I'm aware that I'm not good at it and that I need to need to uh, work on it. If you guys, can you see up here at the top where it's got like all my screens that I have open, you see up here where it has this little Facebook thing? I have no idea how I did it, but it hides all my notifications and I'm not going to undo it because like Facebook wears me out and I get, I get so distracted by it. So, um, but you know, like that's just one thing that I'm aware of, but prioritize your time. Like, you know, Jade shared, I think that it was Jen Guthrie, that talked about how, you know, she sits down and she just does as much as she can in like an hour, an hour and a half. Like if that's the approach that you have to do, do it. If you have to break up your power hour, if you have to break up, you know, your invites, whatever it is in through pockets throughout the day, then do it. Just figure out what works for you. But I think time is one of the biggest things that also makes people stop in this business. So make sure that you're, you're working with your time and you're making the most of it. Um, you have to take action. Like I said, you know, like I just talked to a lot of people and I remember I talked about myself like that first year and a half I was a coach. Like I didn't do anything. Like I talked about it and said I wanted to, but I, most of the time I was scrolling through Facebook or making lists or coming up with my to-do list and talking about what I needed to do. I mean, like you just have to, and I think Melanie said it this morning on the, the national wake up call. You just have to do it. Like you just have to stop talking about stuff and you just have to do it. You just have to sit down and pull out your tracker and, and it, connect with three people, invite three people, follow up with three people, you know, shout out somebody, you know, it doesn't take long. 
long. It takes courage sometimes, but you just have to do it. You have to take action um, because that's really what it's about. It's just about the basics. Uh, you know, us just showing up, taking care of ourselves, being proof that the products work, you know, doing our workout, drinking our shake, talking about it, and, and inviting people to our challenge groups and following up. I think this too is where so many people fall back. They miss their goals because they're not following up. They get silence, they get a no, they get, you know, like I reached out to a chick today who told me like four months ago that she couldn't do it. And I just said, hey, you know, like I just, I'm scrolling and I just saw your name and I really felt led to reach out to you. Like, I know you wanted to make a change. You know, I shared some meal plans in the past, but I just thought maybe now you might be a good time for you to start a challenge group and shake trash ecology. And she said, no, she said, no, my kids just went to private school. I really want to do it, but I can't right now, but I'll, I'll get back with you when I can, you know? And so like, I didn't, I didn't make a sale off of her. I don't have success club points, but she knows that I was thinking about her. And then I really, it was, it was genuine. Like, I know she really wants to do it. She just can't right now. So I feel like when she can, she'll come to me. And, and so follow-up is so important. And recognition. Um, let's see. I know Jay did this today. Who did it the other day? Becca's really good at this, at recognizing your challengers. I don't do that. Like, I don't do it publicly. I mean, I really I really should. Like, I, I mean, that's cool what y'all are doing. Like, it, I'm sure it makes them feel like a million bucks. But um, whether it's recognizing your challengers or fellow coaches or even someone who may not even be in our, our industry, in our in the coaching industry, you know, like shout people out, recognize other people. Uh, you know, like I, I wrote that post the other morning about loving others as yourself. Like, you know, if you if you see somebody doing really well in this business or another business, and and even if they're like far advancing advancing you, like just shout them out, say way to go, girl. You know, like just recognize people for good things. You know, it can be anything from like faith based or you know business based or whatever fitness. Um, just just take five minutes a couple of times a week to to recognize somebody else I feel like that shows that this is not just about us you know and that we can be happy and excited uh, for other people I think that's a really cool vital behavior um, and I, there's five obviously on here which one's not a vital behavior follow-up I can't remember see I don't even know <laughs> uh, personal development uh, I think, again, this is something that people skip. You know, whenever I would ask people who were struggling or wanting to talk to me, well, what personal development are you doing? Oh, they're like, oh, I don't really get to it. Um, and it's just, it's it's called a vital behavior because it's vital. <laughs> like, you can't really, you can't keep going strong. You can't get through the rough patches. You can't get over self-doubt and fear. And, you know, and for me, like, I'm not business-minded. Like, I have to read a book. I have to listen to Darren Hardy to know how to run my business. You know, so personal development is is huge and you know like it's Melanie I remember always she always told us this in the beginning I'm sure she still does but like she always said don't be a collector of information which basically just means don't read it and then not do anything um, which I, I can totally be guilty of you know don't read a book about confidence and, and not put it to use uh, you know and so like don't be a collector of information when you're reading your personal development do something with it like immediately uh, you can read for five minutes and then use that that you learn to go and do these four vital behaviors. Um, and so make sure that you're in your personal development. I love my personal development, but I do always kind of make it come last. But um, I've got to work on that. Which leads me to Jade. And she has put together some, some tips um, for, for engaging your challengers because, you know, our challengers obviously are the heart and soul of what we do as coaches, um, building a team, you know, success club trips, all that stuff is fun and exciting, uh, but it's not worth anything if we're not helping our challengers. They're like our, our bread and butter, you know, they're, they're just why we do it, uh, not just, not financially, but because we want to help them. And so, and they also, it turns, challengers turn into coaches, which grows our business. So, you know, we've got to be taking care of our challengers. And I know that I can totally get so distracted um, and fail at this. So, Jay has been doing some really good stuff with her challengers, and she's got some things I'm going to let her share. So, um, Jay, you just, I'll just follow along with you in advance as you want me to. Okay, sounds good. Um, sorry, I'm gonna have to hold the phone like really close to my face so I can see all these things. Okay. But, um, so I know in the past that I have struggled, especially with like the November, December groups, I really struggled with 
getting people to um, respond and get engaged, but also, you know, I had to do a reflection and I had to ask myself, why are my challengers not so engaged? And it was because I was mentally checked out myself because, you know, all these uh, things were going on, holidays were um, around us and I was mentally checked out too. I was still doing my workouts, but I wasn't like committed and helping others like I needed to. And, um, but I needed to lead by example and leading by example creates trust and your challengers will have faith that you are leading them down the right path. If I'm leading by example, doing what I need to do, posting in the um, challenge group daily, then they're going to see that and that's going to be kind of contagious and they're going to pick up on it and say, all right, she's showing up. So I need, I need to show up too. Um, they will duplicate what you do. It's like monkey see, monkey do. It's like I change it to challenger see, challenger do. Um, they're, they're, like I said, they're going to mimic what you do because they're, if you build that relationship, they're going to want to make you proud. And, um, and I'll get to that point in a minute too, but make sure that you are taking care of yourself first, put on your oxygen mask before you assist others. I love that. I saw that, um, somewhere on the internet as I was getting ready to post it. Like, that's a really good point. Um, since I travel a lot so, and I'm sure Rachel, you, remember that from your flight. But I was like, that's so true. But if you don't take care of yourself, like you can't, you can't help others. Um, I remember reading this one challenger or she was a coach. She said that she completely just forgot about taking care of herself. And before she realized it, she had gained, you know, 10 to 15 pounds back. And that's because she wasn't taking care of herself. She was too concerned about helping others and wasn't focusing on her. And if your health is not first priority, then others are not going to follow suit either. Okay, next slide. Um, so accountability. You can lead by example all you want, but if you're not holding your challengers accountable, they're not going to show up. Um, they're not going to be as um, active as you would like them to be. So um, when the going gets tough, you have to remind them of their goals at the at the beginning you know i tried to set i get them to set goals and um to be specific with those goals a lot of times they can set goals well i just want to be healthy well i, I just want to lose weight well you have to like make them be specific i need to lose 10 pounds by february 5th that way they have a deadline they have um exact goal in mind that they're trying to reach and it makes it um a challenge um, let's see, which brings me to my next point. If you don't know your challenger's goals, then your challenger, your challenge group will not be, um, what you want it to be. You can't hold anyone accountable to something they don't have. Get them to set clear, measurable, attainable goals. So just to reiterate is if you don't know their goals then you can't push them to reach those goals. So you need to be mindful of those. And I know like you may have um, quite a few challengers, but before you check in with one, you know, read back over what their goals were so you can call them out nicely or ask them about, are you, you know, are you, how are you, where are you at with reaching your goals? So you need to make sure you're mindful of their goals. And that also just creates, um, trust. They, they know that you are in it for them and that you, that they can count on you because you're going to hold them accountable for it. Hey, Jay. Um, from, Yes. Can I ask you a question. Do you just go back to like? Do you just have them? Do they comment on your post, like that first post at the beginning, or do you have like a form, or do you do they message you with their goals? Like, how do you keep up with it? Um, I do that. Um, they comment them in the uh -huh. in the comments after I say, okay, it's time to post our goals for today, yeah. and I kind of give them an outline in that post to go by. Mm -hmm. And um, I do that because I like the other challengers to see what everybody else's goals are too. Okay. And that way that kind of creates a connection. Okay. Um, let's see, where am I? I think we're still here. Yes. So yeah, remind them weekly of those goals because, you know, there's going to be the weekend where they're like, they get kind of lackadaisical. They want to cheat, um, have one or two cheat meals or more than one cheat meal. And you kind of have to remind them. So I would, I usually like to remind my challengers on Saturday mornings um, about their goals because that's when they're starting to, you know, get kind of lazy. It's the weekend and you just kind of remind them either Saturday or Sunday about their goals and, um, you know, push them 
towards the new week. And along with that, I would give them a compliment because compliment boosts confidence. And um, that's one thing that's going to really push them to want to stay um, connected into the challenge group. Okay. Oh, wait, I didn't say backup plans. Sorry. This is a really good one. Backup plan. Um, so before you even start with your challengers in a, in a group, you need to ask them, um, so if I notice that you stop posting, how would you like me to support you and to get you back on board? This is going to happen with a challenger at some point or time within the, um, the month or however long you run your group. So it's just good to know how to approach them because we kind of may get um, nervous or scared to call someone out. And it's not that we're, you know, because you don't want to come across rude, even though that's not, you know, the way we would, that's not the, we don't want people to take us that way, even though that's not the way we mean it. But you know how some people can get. So knowing how someone is, appro is approachable is a, good, um, is a good thing to know about that person so that when you when you do see them slacking you can call them out the way that they would best respond because we know we are all different we all have different personalities and um, what may work for me is not going going to work for Rachel so it's good to understand that person and what is going to help them get back in motion if that makes sense okay And connection. I think this one is like one of the most important ones. Um, this is where the magic happens because um, I cannot see these words. I'm so sorry. Um, I it know. says magic happens when people connect. This is so important. Yes. Okay. I should have worn my glasses okay. or brought my laptop. Um, they need to feel connected with not only you as their coach, but with other challengers as well. So what I do is I ask them to share, um, you know, why they're here, why they're, why they want to make a change. And, um, usually it stems from, they want to make their, um, their kids, they want to be there for their kids or they want to, um, be there for their husband. They love their husband and they want to, you know, be better for them. And it's, I think that's really, you know, kind of, they want to do it for themselves, but you know, what really pushes someone is their family or someone that they love that they want to be there for. And so I always ask them to share a picture of their family or someone who um, kind of pushes them towards this journey. And if they share about themselves, then other challengers get to read about them and see their pictures and kind of connect with them um, that way. And I'm telling you, I have challengers that always connect with one another. Like this past, um, this group now, I've had three or four people make connections. Oh, I know so-and-so. Mm -hmm. And we went to school with one another and like they never even met each other, but they made a connection based off stuff that they shared, um, during this post. So that's just when, so it builds again, accountability and connection and so you feel they feel safe and more comfortable to share um, throughout the challenge um, let's see I encourage what does that say <laughs> oh my veterans yes I, I encourage my veterans to share um, some of the things that worked for them because like I have two or three veterans in this group this month and I just send them a message and I say hey would you mind sharing what um, worked for you during, you know, your first time that you did your challenge group? You know, we have a few um, rookies aboard and, you know, I know that you know what it feels like to be in their shoes. Do you have any advice to offer them or any motivation that you could have used during your first challenge group? And they're usually like, oh yeah, I don't mind. And it's kind of contagious because once they post, you know, something, something encouraging the first time, it's like they want to keep doing it. I've had, I've asked this one challenger to be specific to just, Hey, would you mind posting on Monday, something that will help the other challengers and y'all she's done it. She's done it again. Like she keeps posting. So I'm, I think she likes getting response from everyone. They're like, Oh, that's a good idea. Which in return will uh, maybe kind of plant that seed of, Hey, maybe I can do this coaching thing. Cause I've definitely mentioned it to her and she's like, no, I'm just not ready. But hopefully this will kind of give her that push, like which it. is also, 
another good thing. Um, yes, and this is another good one. Don't just post about your food workout and Shakeology. That because that can get boring, you know. Second week, if all we're seeing is your your food, your meal plan, your Shakeology, and your workout selfie, then we're kind of we're gonna get bored. So you kind of got to keep things interesting. Post something funny that happened if you were in Walmart and you know you um, you knocked over like the whole organic shelf while you're trying to figure out your recipe from that you had planned for the week, or you know something that somebody said to you. Keep it funny, keep it interesting, and I like to post jokes in mine. I know that may be a, the teacher coming out with me, but I always like, well, to get my classroom, you know, to get the giggles out because I teach middle school, I always say something funny or share like um, a little riddle that will get them um, get them interested. So it's just stuff like that to keep them coming back and seeing new things every day because you don't want to keep reading the same chapter over and over again. You want to see what's next, so you got to kind of keep keep the hook, keep them interested. Um, let's see here. Oh yeah, the stronger the relationships, the stronger the engagement. You're going to have to individually message your challengers at least once a week, mm -hmm. whether it's a "Hey girl" message thinking about you, or um. Is there anything that I can help you with? Are you struggling with something? Do you need um, clarification on anything? You know, that's what I'm here for. I want to make sure that, you know, you use me um, and get the best out of this experience. And nine times out of 10, they, they have a question and they're just too scared to ask in mm -hmm. the group. And then I will ask them, hey, would you mind posting, or, you know, would you mind posting um, this in, uh, in, the, um, in the group so that everyone can see it? And then they see, okay, everybody else benefited from, you know, the question that I had, which will give them the, um, the courage to maybe if they have another question, just go ahead and just post straight to the group. Let's All start. right. Okay. Okay. And recognition. So like Rachel said um, earlier, recognition is something that, um, you know, Becca is really good at. I made a recognition post today. That was actually my first one that I made through social media that everyone could see. I normally do it just within the group, but um, I asked her permission first. So I recommend that. Don't just randomly throw somebody out there because again, we all have different personalities and um, that could, that could push somebody, push somebody away and we just don't know. So you want to make sure that, hey, is it okay if I, um, you know, celebrate you on my Facebook page? I think you're doing an awesome job, and I just really want the whole world to see it. So do you mind if I shout you out? And, of course, she was like, yeah, girl, go for it. I'd love that. But, you know, some people are very quiet, and that's not their, their personality, and they may not prefer that. So you just shout them out in the challenge group. But um, so just do a fun shout out um, examples, you know, for the first person to give before and after pics with measurements or, you know, that would be one I would post in the group or the consistency helpful. They're helpful. They're engaging. This group, I really have a lot of people who are helpful. You know, people ask questions and other challengers will hop in and say, oh, well, this is what I'm doing. And I think that's great because that also takes a little bit of the work off of you. And be genuine. We all know, <laughs> I said, we all know a faker. Don't be a faker. You can totally tell when somebody is trying to be nice for their benefit, not yours. And so your challengers are going to see that if you're just trying to play coach instead of be a, a real coach, if that makes any sense. So make sure that you're coming from a good place and you're not just doing it to, um, to do it. Okay. All right, and um, feedback. Prob this is I haven't done this yet, but I plan to do it for this challenge group at the end, and I'm nervous about it. And I guess because since I'm a teacher, I, um, after you know I get observed from teaching, they always have feedback, and it makes me so nervous to see, you know, what they're going to say because you know it's kind of critical. It's like okay, well, this is what you're you're doing wrong. And so you need to fix it. But, you know, also there's things that I do right and they do, you know, say those things. But it's the, what I pay attention to most is what I did wrong and I beat myself up about it. But 
what I've come to realize is if we don't get feedback, we don't improve. There are things that we're not going to be good at. There are things we're going to do wrong and we need to be, um, we need to be, I don't want to say called out, but I can't think of the word I'm looking for. Um, constructive criticism. You know, we need that to better ourselves as a coach and provide our challengers with the, um, with the essentials that they need. And so what I'm going to do is after the group um, is completed, I'm going to ask them for their feedback. What did you like or didn't like about the challenge group? If you could change one thing, what would it be? And, or what would you keep the same? And that just kind of helps you get a perspective from a challenger because yes, we're given scripts and you know, we're told what to do, but it's good to incorporate um, their opinions after they have, you know, completed it because they may throw out something that you never even thought about and it may totally work. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, and in closing, after the challenge group has ended, um, I will add them into my, what I call a general fitness group. Of course, I call mine um, compelled to be fit because that goes along with um, my um, compelled by courage for my team name. But in this group, I still encourage them to, you know, share their workouts, um, recipes, and just for overall um, encouragement and accountability. But, you know, I just keep them updated on new things. Like when the All Access Challenge Pack came out, I posted in this group and I told them, hey, a lot of you are, um, you know, paying the, the $40 for every, you know, or for every quarter or whatever it is. And you need to sign up for this because it's going to save you money. And I had three people to switch over. So that's a good thing to also have is to put everyone that you, you know, coached in the past in this group. So that way you can since they know what it's about their experience, then they can um, go there to share recipes or to find recipes, to get information. And I try to post, I don't post every day in this group because they've kind of got the hang of it. They're veterans. They know what they're doing. I post um, three to maybe, maybe four times, but ma majority of the time it's three times a week. And just to kind of get them, you know, make sure that I'm still checking in on them. I'm here if they need me but I don't like over flood them with information. Jay, are those yeah. people in that group? And like, do you have people that do another group challenge group with you as well? Or is that just for people not in a challenge group? Um, well, right now, like some of my challengers in this um, health bet mm -hmm. are in the um, general group because I did say, Hey guys, the health bet is back. If you want to join in with a health bet, then, you know, comment below. And I had like three or four to comment. And so I added them into my challenge tracker app. And so, yes, they are in this general group and also in my challenge group. Depend Because I'll say, hey, I have another challenge group. Are you in need of one? Do you want to join? And so if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Okay. Um, last and final thoughts. Challenge groups are the bridges between being a customer and being a coach. Good challengers make great coaches. If you're not getting much from your group, chances are they are not getting much from you. We can um, get lost in all the little things we need to do as coaches, but don't forget the first and foremost important aspect of it all is to do everything with love. You know, because we can get so caught up in I've got to I've got to do my four vital behaviors. I've got to check in. I've got to post here. But if you forget your purpose, if you forget your why, none of it is going to matter. And your business is not going to grow if you're just not, if you're not coming from a good place, if you're not being genuine and you're not doing it out of love. Because if you do it out of love, a no won't, won't stop you. If you're doing it out of love, it's going to, you're going to do what you got to do every day because that's where your heart is, if that makes sense. <laughs> yes. Okay, I think that's all I got to say. If y'all have any questions, um, just let me know. Does anybody have any questions? Like, I swear I'm printing these off and putting them on my wall because I kind of stink at this kind of stuff. I think that was really good. <laughs> oh, thank you. That was really good. Like, I really, I'm not good at that kind of stuff. And that just gave me a ton. Like, I was making lists or notes down here. Um, does anybody else have questions or do you have anything that you do with your challengers to kind of keep them engaged? Anybody? 
Okay. Um, does anybody have anything else that you need help with tonight? We have Jason and Lindsay on. They're two new coaches. They hopped on. I'm so glad y'all are here. Um, does anybody else have any questions? Anything you want to talk about or? Mm -mm. Okay. All right, guys. Well, um, plug into your training groups, please, please, please. You know, like make sure you check in there once a day, see what um, the leader is posting. There's going to be some really good information in all three of these groups this month. So um, make sure that you're checked in there and uh, just participating and kind of doing those daily tasks. And I'm going to let you guys go watch the ball game because I'm going to do that with Matt, I guess. Okay. All right. All right. Good night. Good night.